Hello guys, today I'll be working on the Snow Name flash drive. It's a 2 gig unit UT165L48 controller made by US Best. It's an older type of unit, but we still get them every now and then. And this device I've tested in my, all my equipment. It does not communicate uh, through the USB interface. The issue is probably related to the NAND. So let's go ahead and take this out. So the fume extraction is on. Use a TSOP48 socket. And uh, time to go ahead and start the uh, tool. Use adapter. The name the case. L48. A two gigabyte chip, so it shouldn't take too long to um, to read it out. Let's get the ID on it first. We got uh, Toshiba ID. This is the data visualiz visualization that I'm also uh, often refer to. You guys can see that there are visual patterns, like here, for example. It looks like some sort of uh, fat tables here. And the content, so there is no XOR on this device. Uh, let's go ahead and clear it and read. We're going to read it uh, into a dump file with optimal speed. The speed it gives us is 4 megabytes, so it takes about 7 minutes to read 2 gigs. First thing we've got to do is do error correction. Error correction is found. Over here, where it detects uh, ECC for page, whatever, uh, is the breakdown of the ranges. So we're dealing with uh, this many bytes and they're broken down into 535 bytes each. So that's 512 for uh, data and the rest is uh, for error correction code. I'm gonna run the error correction and try to have as much of it fixed as we can. Uh, this takes a bit of time. Uh, whatever it can fix, it will be fixed. Whatever it won't fix, it will have to be reread in effort of improvement. Uh, it doesn't necessarily will get improved, 
but there are some things that we can play around with to uh, um, kind of manipulate the unit to read better, to manipulate the unit to read uh, cleaner, and hopefully uh, that will give us enough uh, to build the logical image out of. So the error correction is done. This again, because the unit is so small, everything gets done very snappy. Uh, if you look at the map, uh, we see that the unit is two gigs. And if we create all, all of the invalid sectors here, uh, we end up with 137 megabytes. We can try and uh, select all of the stuff here and go through another reread pass. And if everything works good, I'd like to keep the values high. Uh, this chip doesn't even have a read retry command available for it. Um, for power, I'll leave it stock. Let's see what this can do. And let's see, maybe we can play around with temperature a little bit to see if we can get a better uh, read from the device. For temperature control, it's basically spray cold and we see that it's Throwing up more and more green blocks for us. There's 4,000 sectors that we've corrected. What we can try and do is uh, first build a logical image, then see what um, portions we're still missing and how critical they are for us. Maybe they're not even that critical and maybe we don't even need to really concentrate around them all that much. We'll run this pass and one more to see if it's going to plateau real hard or if it's still going to improve a little bit. And you can see it's cracking some more stuff. But it's becoming less and less effective. 2 megabytes improvement on 137. Yeah, it's going to take a while if it will even happen. I mean, some of these sectors can be really stubborn and they don't get corrected at all. But let's see if we can take it further. Uh, so looking at the um, bit view, scroll down somewhere where there's just pure data and scroll across we see these vertical lines these border lines are kind of uh, drawn in to show where one uh, range ends and the next one begins and when we get to the t to the end we got eight bytes here and the end for service area where their markers are Let's go back and do page transformation because right now, if we run raw recovery on this, we get to see some stuff here. But if we go into JPEGs, for example, we see that all headers are bad, size and sectors is very small. So we still need to go through page transformation. And to go into page designer, we have page size of 4,320. So if we were to count those vertical lines, uh, we would have found out that there's eight of them because uh, 535 can only fit eight times into this number. Let's go and break this up. So 535 times eight times eight is 4,280. We know that um, that's our data in the ECC, and we had a little tail at the end for our markers was eight. So we're gonna add eight here. Now here we have data plus ECC, we need to also separate them, right? So we're gonna break them into eight proportionate chunks, because there's eight of them. And now we have 535, we're gonna break that into data and ECC separated. Apply. All right. Now our page transformation element is here. And if we run raw recovery on that, Let's see what that gives us. We at least get some JPEGs that are coming up with green color. So if they work and the sizes are showing that they're, they're proper size, then we may actually start our assembly because that means there's no additional mix involved. Yeah, these are small. 
I'm not even going to try to open it. It's one, it's a thumbnail or some sort. These are big pictures, and we still get occasional picture that is got a red uh, color on it. There, this is a full size picture right there, and definitely is opening up perfectly. It's 3.7 megabytes in size. We don't need to do any more mix assembly. We just need to arrange blocks into a sequential order and um, build a logical image. So to do that, we're gonna go into data analysis, uh, block number. Um, we know that our block size is 1024. So we can put that in there. The tool will build a logical image using a block number, which it will get from the marker, which is at the end of every page. And uh, when this process is done, we should have something that we can at least browse, review. Again, we do have quite a bit of corruption. 135 megabytes of bad sectors may not sound like a lot, but this is only two gigs and um, we don't have MBR. Because the images were assembled and they were working fine, I don't think uh, we have a problem with the uh, block number build. Um, but uh, let's go and do uh, disk analysis real quick. I'll, I'll just leave it all on stock settings. So there's our FAT16 file system that we've located. It has a root. It has content in. Uh, it's got some probably corrupted directories in there but uh, I can see that most of the stuff is all Excel spreadsheets. There are several options that we can do here. Uh, we can obviously run raw recovery on the entire FAT16 unit or we can run partition analysis. Most likely it's not going to be rebuilt perfectly but in the form of lost and found objects. And then here we see that it found some folders that actually have subfolder structure all intact. This is a map of used sectors by FAT. And we can see that some of those here are showing red still. If we go ahead and build a map for them, should be able to build a map for them. You can see most of the stuff is corrected in green, so the content is going to be fine. But where we have the most red is the beginning. So what's at the beginning? At the beginning, we have our file system. So that's what seems to be hit the most. So four megabytes uh, is what we definitely would want to read. Let's see if we can maybe put some hurting on this chip and force it out. <laughs> but with a little bit of cold, it's giving stuff up. Now remember, we only have to improve uh, the sector one time for our logical image to have permanent effect in a positive way. But we need to read a lot of those pages. There's a lot of bad pages here. So if we can narrow down uh, this amount of bad pages to, let's say, a, a significantly smaller number, we will run the partition analysis once again because uh, what we had as errored out sector before now may be actually fixed. So the results of what the uh, partition analysis will discover and will rebuild will most likely improve. So let's see how much effect we had on it so far. So four megabytes. Down to 3.8, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. We can keep going. You see, keeping the chip warmer is something we can set up with the hot air and uh, let it run for extensive periods of time. But with the cold spray that I'm using to cool the chip down, there isn't much to uh, to kind of keep it a constant, right? I mean, we need to continuously spray um, the unit with it. And the lower voltage, see if that makes a difference or not. So you want to really just explore uh, different options because there is really no uh, specific guideline on how you should proceed in this case. In this case, any method that brings improvement is a successful one. <laughs> whether it's cold, whether it's heat, whether it's voltage, whether it's read-retry, anything that you can do to make 
those red pages go green is a step in the right direction now keep in mind that putting too much voltage too much heat too much cold can have negative effects on the device as well whatever we get now is kind of like icing on the cake because this is pretty much the stuff that would have been left out if we didn't make that extra push extra effort this really can go on for a while i'm gonna stop it for now so let's see how much is left you see the improvements are very small and it is time consuming because it's gonna run through several passes I want to see if I can find the MBR for it. No, we still don't have the MBR. Um, okay, well, what can we do? At this point, uh, I would just, you know, get rid of um, all of the results. Let's just go ahead and delete this record. Uh, we're going to look for another. There's the partition. Let's go ahead and run partition analysis for that. So overall, if we were to um, map this out and uh, let's say build a map of um, all of the marked files that are in here, let's go here and see how many sectors are still invalid in what we have obtained. 1.7 megabytes. I hope you guys liked the presentation. This was pretty informative, I think. And uh, that's how logical image gets built, uh, at least for this controller and this specific scenario. It wasn't perfect, but it was as close to perfect as we could get it to be in the last hour or so. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next episode.